removal of the Jetna de Jeltis Dam. One of the actions implemented as part of the Life Cipriba project has been the complete removal of one of the largest transverse barriers impeding the passage of fish in the project area, the Jekla de Jeltes Dam. The Jekla de Jeltes Dam was constructed in 1958 across the Huebra River, a tributary of the Jeltes River, to regulate annual water supply to the municipality of Vitigudino. However, construction of new infrastructures and water supply pipes in the second half of the 20th century definitively resolved the supply of water to villages in the region and the dam gradually fell into disuse. As a result, having observed that this water resource was unused for reasons attributable to the concession holder, the Duero River Basin Authority Water Board decreed the expiration of the right to use of water from the Huebra River stored in the Jekla Dam. Article 126 on Public Authority Property establishes that when a concession expires, the works, constructions and fixed installations on public property must be demolished by the concession holder, or failing that, compulsorily, by the public authorities. Consequently, it was decided to remove the dam in 2018. Besides complying with the law, this action was aimed at restoring the longitudinal connectivity of the Huebra River, one of the main goals pursued by the Life Cipriba project, a European initiative implemented in this region in order to conserve native cyprinid species by, amongst other things, ensuring their migratory capacity, which is essential to complete the life cycle of most of these species. Demolition was scheduled for April 2018, and the plan was to remove the entire structure of the dam while conserving the access area, which would be converted into an interpretation area for the action. In addition, it was proposed to restore the ruins of a former mill in the area, which had been covered by the reservoir, and to restore its associated weir. To ensure longitudinal connectivity, following removal of the dam, a fish ladder would be constructed as an integral part of the weir structure. The dam body consisted of an 18-meter controlled spillway with four 5-meter openings closed by 4-meter high sluice gates and separated by 1.5-meter wide reinforced concrete pillars. An auxiliary spillway was located on the left-hand side, adjacent to the central spillway, and 9 meters above the riverbed. This site was protected by a reinforced concrete training wall. The series of sluice gates was located towards the center of the riverbed and extended 27.5 meters to the right abutment, where the pumping station was located. Demolition began with the removal of all mechanical and electrical elements in the service tower, from the heavy transformers on the upper floor to the control mechanisms for the sluice gates and pumping station that sent water to the supply network. This task was completed in a few hours. Once the brick tower had been emptied, it was mechanically demolished and the rubble was piled at the foot of the structure to provide a temporary access ramp to the concrete pillars of the dam. Having created an access ramp for the demolition machinery, the mechanisms and counterweights of the first sluice gate were rapidly dismantled and the gate was demolished once stabilized at ground level. These initial tasks facilitated better assessment of structure quality and therefore of whether the estimated time for removal was accurate. Some of the concrete used to construct the right abutment had not been not reinforced. So, once the demolition machinery arrived, work began to progress at a good pace. The main difficulty was the presence of the solid structural pillars, which hindered removal of the first gate until the first load of demolition rubble had been cleared and work could progress on the other gates. In addition, the walkway and sluice gate mechanisms and counterweights had to be removed with caution because they were located very high above the area where the machinery was operating.
Once the top of the structure had been stabilized, the pillars were mechanically demolished. After four days of demolition work, the last two gates could be removed, which in practical terms meant that the river could once again begin to run freely. However, the continued presence of the machinery access ramps and the base still sitting on rock meant that full connectivity had not yet been achieved for the fish species. It was only after the first week of demolition that river connectivity began to be restored. The dam barrier had been removed and species present in the area could now swim upstream. In fact, thanks to the strong flow of water circulating at the time, the first schools of northern straight-mouthed nays had already been detected upstream of the reservoir for the first time in decades while demolition work was still underway, a testimony to the ecological restoration achieved by the dam removal project. Demolition concluded with the removal of the spillway on the left-hand side, completely eliminating the Jekla de Geltes Dam. Once rubble had been removed from the area to permit demolition of the concrete base, longitudinal connectivity was completely restored to the river and it began to return to a natural state that was already evident for only a short distance away from the works. The project continued with restoration of the old mill and, crucially, its weir, in order to provide access to drinking water for cattle in the area in a manner compatible with fish migration. Since the goal of the Cipriba project is to conserve and regenerate all cyprinid species inhabiting this region, another of the actions was to construct a fish ladder in accordance with the directives for the construction of this type of element by Cipriba in different locations within the project area. Following removal of the Jekla Dam and construction of fish ladders around obstacles, longitudinal connectivity was restored to 95% of the length of the Huebra River, permitting the passage of its migratory fish species, protecting an important part of the river's historical heritage, and ensuring that use of the river was compatible with the local economy.